vlog. I'm your host, AJ, and I'm checking in from Harlem. You know, I'm Jim Martinez. I'm from Harlem, you know. Uh, well, I'm originally from Brooklyn, but, you know, I was born in Kings County Hospital, but we came up here. Okay. So, you know, Harlem is where I, you know, where I reside, where I was raised. But I'm a Brooklyn nigga anyhow. Okay. So let's just get that right. But it allows me to be who I am. I done took that Brooklyn flavor with this home swag, with this up, uh, with this little, you know, ability that I had to share with white folks when I was going to high school and college and make it this whole uh, entity within itself. But it kind of really all started right here, um, 2049 Fifth Avenue in Harlem, in the Mecca, you know, and, uh, you know, my mom, my brother and my sisters and stuff. And then she started kicking us all out and started renting all the rooms out. And then, you know, I came home one day, I was like, where's the family? Well, you next, you know? I was like, you about to rent your room out. I was like, okay, hold up. You know, whatever, whatever. But uh, this is this is where I got all my funny, man. Like, this neighborhood didn't look like this. Right, right, right. Wait, whatever, you know, take a look around this neighborhood, homie. Look at how nice trees, little gates around the trees. What was it looking like in the past, like you know, 10, 50 years ago? Yeah, no, I swear on my son, right across the street, this used to be a church until some white man just bought this and made it in all, all, Everything that I used to bear witness to as a child and all of this all around here, it just, it made me who I was, you know, niggas out here selling drugs, all on the streets, you know, crack vials of different colors. And it, it, it was just, it was just wild. It was just wild. So I took that and I, I started applying it. I started using my family situation mixed with my community and what was going on. And I started bringing it to the stage. You know, and I had brothers like Tracy Morgan and Jim Brewer. You know, Colin Quinn and Dave Chappelle at an early age, because I started when I was 15. And I, I was already in workshops with Tracy Morgan at the age of 15. Right. So, it, 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 was, it was at the Uptown Comedy Club. Matter of fact, the Uptown Comedy Club is up that way on 125th and 5th, and I want to take y'all over there. Yeah, we're going to tour down here. Yeah, I, I definitely want to do that. so rich and so thick, man. They, the Brown brothers, Kevin Brown and Andre Brown, are the creators of urban comedy, um, especially on the East Coast. Uh, this used to be the Uptown Comedy Club. Everybody here, Chris Tucker, Kevin Hart, Bill Bellamy, um, so forth and so on. Like, I could just keep saying the names Chris Tucker. Everybody came through here. If you were a real comic, if you was an urban comic, you was doing this, this was the spot. This was, this is where you was coming to get out. Everybody from Russell Simmons who stole Def Comedy Jam idea from the Uptown Comedy Club owners, which is your brothers, Kevin Brown and Andre Brown. Oh, you do it. See the community? See the community? The community sticks. This is the Uptown Salon on Park Avenue. You know, keeping the sisters beautiful and, and all of them. You know what I mean? But that's where it all started. The Uptown Comedy Club is right over there. The lucky spot is right over here where this Applebee shit is at. Wow. It's crazy that this is in our community right now, but it is what it is. But this used to be a corner store by the A-Rides here. And, um, they used to let me come in there and wow out. You know, I shot some footage in there from a show that I'm pushing called Conduct. And, uh, we used to sit out here, me and my dude, L Star, and sell Lucy's when Lucy's, when cigarettes first went up. And we was out here selling Lucy's for 50 cents to 75 cent, killing them, killing them, because yo, listen, it's a hustle every day, everywhere, 
If they selling Lucy's, why can't we sell Lucy's? Why can't we sell the Lucy's before they buy? They sell the Lucy's. And that's what we was just doing. So we had the Arab dude calling the cops on us for selling Lucy's because we was cock blocking they movement and they were selling Lucy's. So we should have this standoff about we selling Lucy's? No, they're in there selling Lucy's. And we can show you where they're hiding the Lucy's at because we used to look through the window and we knew all of that. So eventually he just let us sell Lucy's and we let him sell Lucy's, you know what I mean? But so when I wasn't all that funny yet, and I didn't want to work in the Matrix, and I didn't want to sell drugs, although tobacco is a drug, but it's not a motherfucking felony drug, you know. You know, I was out here. Well, check this out. You said, you know, in the very beginning, you was out here grinding, hustling, to be a man. Yeah. When did you discover that you wanted to be funny, that you knew you were funny, or you had these things up on that? I always knew I was funny ever since I was a kid in school. Uh, I used to always get in trouble for making people laugh. And what was crazy is that uh, my uh, my homeroom teacher used to hate taking me to detention because I was funny. But he knew he had to do it in order for the rest of the kids to get lessons. So I always knew I wanted to be a comic. I always knew I was funny because I had my demographic, you know, in a place. You know what I mean? So. I knew I was coming. That's a fact. Since I was a kid. Yeah, I'm talking about seven, eight, everywhere we go. You know what I'm saying? Especially in Harlem. All around in Harlem, we go get that. You know what I'm saying? Um, and my mom's, man, she know me outside or something like that. I love for y'all to meet my mom's. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we gonna look fine. You know what? And I think I might need, I might, she might be right around that corner over there. So we gonna go try to find my moms. And I'll, I'll tell a couple of stories about what mom's talking shit about me when I first started college. You know, and why she feel different about it now. You know, seeing her son on television every week. You know what I'm saying? Get ready to see her son on the big screen. Her whole disposition is different now. You know what I mean? But she my mom. Mount Mars Park, spent a lot of a lot of nights in the pool over here against the, the authorities' wishes. You know, night pool was always it, you know, because we didn't have AC, so we had to cool off, you know what I mean? Uh, but Mount Mars Park pool was epic. It was, uh, every summer you look forward to it. You know, every guy looks forward to the pool because that's when they can, you know, nicely molest you, but not molest you, but they're still molesting you. Yeah, you know, with the fake, I'm about to dunk you. It doesn't take you that long to dunk me, nigga. And what's that pressing up against my butt cheeks? You know, you know my mommy. household needs for the cops to be called. You know what I mean? Um, and, you find that everywhere. And, and my mom's, you know, at, 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 when you're a kid and, and, and your dad isn't around and your mom is your mom and your dad, yeah, yeah. you know, you, 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 you will believe, like, wait a moment, this lady's crazy. You know, <laughs> she's playing two roles and she's out of her mind and, but she, she always, 
gave us tough love. And, and that was the love that we needed. And as a child, I didn't understand it really. You know, I was like, I, why? You know why she isn't? But she had to because there was no dad. So there had to be that moment of a difference for in her behavior to, to install some sort of discipline, especially raising two men in the house. But uh, I'll never forget the time when I told my mom, hey, mommy, I'm doing comedy now. You know, this is when I left all the drugs and all the stupid shit alone. And my mom was sitting on the church steps with my nigga nut. <laughs> And I said, I'm a comic, mommy. She said, a comic? Shit, those jokes ain't paying no bills. The rent due in a couple of weeks. Hey, yo. I said. I just want to pay me. I said, hold on. I said, I said, hold on, yo. Did she just shit on all my dreams just now about rent? But when she was, yeah, But you know what it was? I, 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 nut heard it. And he went back and told everybody on the block what my mom said to me. So now every day I'm getting jokes. Oh, nigga, you telling jokes? Don't you know there's drugs in your soul? And there's all different things that's going on. So, you know, that was a big thing that I would have to deal with every day in the community around my block. And, 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 but it was fun to me. It was fun to me because it made me. It made me who I am and what I do. My sister was also, Shahara was the life of the house also. I got... She kind of ran in the family. Yeah. But, well, my mom, she, she produced that kind of atmosphere. You know what I'm saying? She she produced that kind of atmosphere. All the kids, all the kids from the block is in that house all the time, right? Yeah. So we go to the beach every day. Oh, I said about 15 minutes. Reese Beach. Oh, Brooklyn. I remember that one. Yeah. Reese Beach. Stuff like this in LA, you know what I mean? They got it, but it's not 
with this flavor. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's just, first of all, it's the atmosphere. It's the atmosphere. It's the people. It's black owned. But it's like, it's not the vibe. It's the whole situation is driven off of vibes. You know, when, when, when people come up in here, they know leave all the bullshit outside. You know what I'm saying? Niggas just don't respect the movement. They ain't coming up in here with no hammers. They ain't coming up in here with no drum, no drugs. None of that craziness, you know what I mean? So it's a look, you know what I mean? Why this is my do dingo spot, you know what I mean? Uh, we used to be on uh, 125th, and my do dingo just came over and got his own joint popping, and, and it's lit. This is just all what it is. You know, my brothers over there that back there, they the ones that make the magic happen, you know, with the blending and everything. Let me get a fruit on. Um, anything awesome, man, whatever, whatever. But you know how I like it. You already know, you know. So I'm going to juice up. It's Friday. You know, so all you ladies out there, let me explain to y'all. When your man say he going to the juice bar, he ain't going to the juice bar just because he want a spiritual tea and nothing like that. He, he coming to load up so he can, you know, fulfill all of your uh, requirements later on that evening. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, they got all the aphrodisiacs in there, you know. I, I could get I could get the grand slam, but you know the grand slam ain't ain't popping right now. My shorty out of town, so all that will do is just set me up for failure with some other shit. Just don't need to walk around with a loaded hammer if you're not gonna use it. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, that's what's making me right there. You heard? My man was saucy last night when I was walking through all late night. He's coming from what, uh, Wendy's. Yeah, I was like, how do you work at an all healthy natural juice bar spot and you was coming from Wendy's? And you was eating a Wendy's snack and you had one in a bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, it, it makes me want to tell Dingo on him, you know, but I'm going to keep it light. You know. So, Jimmy, um, let's talk about some of the projects that you're working on now. Um, we have this week's March, and we're going to talk about some of the projects that you're working on. Well, right now, um, you know, currently you can find me every week on television. I'm on Centric with this awesome show called According to Him and Her. Uh, we have a point, uh, executive producer, John Mark. Well, we got an awesome cast. We got Brent Michaels. We got Derek Sleazy Evans home from ten Tennessee, Memphis. Uh, we got uh, we got uh, Billy Sorrell, Vaughn DiCarlo, Adia Robinson, G Thing, Tiffany Haddish. Hey, uh, the cast is crazy and it's so ratchet. I can't believe it's on. It's actually on the network. Uh, I just finished the movie with Chris Rock, Kevin Hart, Gabrielle Union, uh, Cedric the Entertainer, Bruce Bruce. Uh, that should be coming out the fall, end of the summer. That's untitled for whatever reasons they have in production. But the Martin Scorsese joint that I just did with Patricia Arquette, it's called The One of Me. And uh, I'm excited for that. You know what I mean? Just, just to be associated with the name Martin Scorsese. You know, man, I'm from, I'm from the gutter. You know, like, who knew? You know what I'm saying? But I'm here, and I'm, that's a fact. And I deserve every bit of it. You know, but I think the people, man, you know, I thank the people for filling my vibe and accepting me for me and positioning me to be in position. It's, it's without you guys, it, it's nothing. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm still here, man, fighting that fight. I was completely amazed. I met uh, Jimmy about two weeks ago at the Olive Club in the 1 and 11 in Fifth Avenue in Harlem. And watching his performance, you had me think before. You had the audience. Yeah, appreciate it. Um, he had the whole spot lit up. So um, I approached him. I was like, listen, we got to do this interview. I've got to get you on DLightLight.com. So I just want to say, so um we will definitely be following you and following yeah. your career. The real 
Jimmy Martinez on Instagram and Jimmy Martinez on uh, Facebook and Jimmy's Conduct, J-I-M-M-Y-S-K-O-N-D-U-C-T on uh, Twitter, yeah, you look at that, you know, I don't, I don't really, yeah, I should, yeah, I should. Next year, man. Next year, there'll be more projects out. Like I said, I, I you, we was just talking off camera. I just booked that Comedy Central joint that I shot today, uh, Boyfriends. So we're tentatively looking at that at the end of the year. Uh, so we, we, you know, it's just, I think y'all, the people out there, you know what I mean? Uh, I just want to say one thing. I want to give a shout out to all the baby mothers out there that's getting your new nigga fresh with your baby father child support checks. We love y'all, man. You know what I mean? Without you, I can't get no sevens. You know what I mean? No, I ain't heckling at the female. This is real shit that's going on. My baby moms is buying my a new boyfriend Jordan for my baby mom, my child support checks. So come on, man. I'm back on the women. There you go. Don't try to make me out to be no chauvinist.